All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be proving that zero divided by zero is equal to two. So for my proof, first start with zero over zero. Now this is the same thing as 10 or sorry, one minus one, right? Because zero is the same thing as one minus one. So I have one minus one over one minus one, which is zero over zero. Now this is the same thing as 10 minus 10 over 10 minus 10, right? Because 10 minus 10 is again zero. So I have zero over zero still. And this is the same thing as 100 minus 100 over 100 minus 100. Again, 100 minus 100 is zero, 100 minus 100 is zero, so it's zero over zero still. Now, 100 is the same thing as 10 squared. So 100 minus 100 over 100 minus 100, I'm gonna write this as 10 squared minus 10 squared over, now over here for my bottom, I'm actually not gonna write 10 squared minus 10 squared. Instead, I'm gonna write 10 times 10 minus 10 times 10, which is again allowed. I'm just, 10 times 10 is the same thing as 10 squared. I'm just not writing it as 10 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b, times a minus b. So in this case, I have 10 squared minus 10 squared. So that's going to equal 10 plus 10 times 10 minus 10. And from the bottom here for my denominator, I'm going to factor out 10. So I get 10 times 10 minus 10. Now, I'm going to cancel these two out. So I have 10 plus 10 over 10 which is equal to 20 over 10, which is equal to two. So I just proved that zero over zero is equal to two. So obviously zero over zero is not equal to, and if you're wondering where the error is in this proof, it's in this step right here, when I canceled out the 10 minus 10 over 10 minus 10. 10 minus 10 is simply zero. So zero divided by zero, remember that's not equal to one. We don't, zero divided by zero, that's indeterminate. So I can't actually cancel these two out because that's simply implying that zero divided by zero is one, which it's not. So this is wrong and zero divided by zero is not two. All right, so in this problem, I have nine to the power of x is equal to 36. So to start, I'm gonna start by taking the log on both sides. So now I have log nine to the power of x is equal to log 36. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent of b to the front. So that's going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 9 to the power of x, and we can think of x as b. So we can move this to the front. And now this is going to equal x times log 9 is equal to log 36. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by log nine so we can isolate x. So now I have x times log nine over log nine is equal to log 36 over log nine. So then these two log nines simply cancel out and I have x is equal to log 36 over log nine. Now, log 36 over here, we can rewrite as log of 9 times 4. And we have this over log 9. So if I have something in the form log of a times b, this is the same thing as log a 
plus log b. So in this case, I have log 9 times 4, and I can rewrite that as log 9 times, or sorry, log 9 plus log 4. Now I have this over log 9. So now, this is the same thing as log 9 over log 9 plus log 4 over log 9. Now log 9 and log 9, these two obviously cancel out. So now I get x is equal to 1 plus log 4 over log 9. And log 4 I can rewrite as log of 2 squared. Log 9 I can rewrite as log of 3 squared. So now this is the same thing as 2 times log 2 over 2 times log 3. And the 2's can simply cancel out. So I'm left with x is equal to 1 plus log 2 over log 3. Now log 2 over log 3, that's the same thing as 0 0.301 over 0 0.477, which is equal to 0 0.631, so x is 1.631. Alright, so in this problem, I have 5 to the power of x is equal to 0. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I first start with 5 to the power of x is equal to 0. And now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 5 to the power of x is equal to log 0. And if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is going to equal b times log a. So log 5 to the power of x, we can think of a as 5 and b as x. So I can move x here to the front. So now I'm going to have x times log 5 is equal to log 0. Now, from here, I'm going to simply divide both sides by log 5 because we want to find the value of x, so we're going to have to isolate it. So then these two cancel out. And I am left with x is equal to log 0 over log 5. Now, we're actually going to plug in the values of log 0 and log 5. So log 5, this is equal to 0 0.6990. And log 0, well, what is log 0 equal to? Log 0 is actually undefined. So I have x is equal to undefined over 0 0.6990, meaning x is simply undefined. And another way to actually prove this is our equation was 5 to the power of x equals 0, right? Well, 5 to the power of 0, this is equal to 1. Let's do 1 less than 0. 5 to the power of negative 1, this is equal to 1 over 5. Let's do 1 less. 5 to the power of negative 2, this is equal to 1 over 25. 5 to the power of 3, this is equal to 1 over 125, sorry, 5 to the power of negative 3. And it's going to go lower and lower and lower because, as you see, as the exponent decreases, 
the number decreases as well. However, it's actually never going to approach zero. So no matter how low the exponent might be, we could even do five to the power of negative one trillion or something like that, and it's never actually going to be zero. Uh, 